Good morning, everyone. <laughs> it's good to be with you this morning. And uh, yeah, it's just a, a great day to be alive, a great day to be talking to you and, um, and to share this word with you. And, you know, as I've been listening to a lot of people for a few months now, and you know, we've been hearing the word now, it's like sort of the, the, the pre-COVID, present COVID and post-COVID words that are coming forth. And we keep hearing the words of in season, the word in season, what's the next season? As I've been talking to a lot of people and certainly pastors and ministries and churches and people all over the world, and what is essential now is that people are working together. We're seeing a non-denominational, maybe post-denominational reality in the church. And a word that's been coming to my mind a lot, I've been sharing with other pastors, I'll share it with you today, is this Caleb Coalition. And that's what I call it, the Caleb Coalition. It's um, based on the book of Numbers and the uh, other man, Caleb. And if you turn with me uh, to Numbers 13, I'll show you what I mean. Before we do that, though, go to Numbers 13. And while you're turning there, I just have two scripture verses. In First Chronicles 12, 32, it says, The sons of Ishakar, men who understood their times with knowledge and what Israel should do. Um, in this list of the, the, the chronological uh, names of uh, the people of Israel, the leaders of Israel at that time in Chronicles, and if you go on with Chronicles, it's chapter after chapter of this. This is one particular man that they describe him as uh, the sons of Ishakar. They understood their times. And I pray that we also be sons of Ishakar. That could also be another title for this message. I call it the, the Caleb Coalition. It could be just that the sons of Ishakar rise up or whatever. But also in Romans 13, Verse 11, it says, Do this, knowing the time, that it is already the hour for you to awaken from sleep. For now, salvation is nearer to us than when we believed. I mean, through the Old and New Testament, the timing of God is crucial. Uh, from the very, very beginning, you know, it's at that, that time God did certain things. At this time, this happened. That's why when I hear, when I hear the word, it's a season, Friends, I, I am a seasoned minister. I hear these words all the time. And, and even uh, in nature, we understand seasons. And if anybody knows me, they, they know that I am a man that loves defined seasons. We just came through a very hot summer, and I love hot summers. I love cold winters. I love um, spring to be spring, autumn to be autumn. And every season, I appreciate the season, anticipating the next season. Uh, even nature tells us this. Even now, it's the end of August. We're anticipating the autumn season. Matter of fact, some people even do their Christmas shopping in July. They're anticipating the season after the season. And so we, we, we just know by nature that we have to understand the seasons. And God works in seasons too. But seasons come and seasons go. And, and in, in, in nature, the seasons are the same, even though everyone is different. Um, I have seen many, many, many autumns in my life. But this one's going to be different. It's, it's, a, it's a fresh autumn, but it's an autumn. So I can, I can anticipate certain things. We've seen certain things in the past, and, and you know God, you know God never changes. He's, his mercies towards us are new every morning. We change all the time, but God stays the same. So even though there may be seasons that we go through, and we talked about this, we learned this in, in Ecclesiastes that for everything there is a season. It's a time for this and time for that, a time for war, a time for peace, a time to plant, a time to you know build up, and so there's seasons all the time, and there are events in our lives, friends, that. That they mark our lives, and yes, seasons do. Well, seasons don't change, but the reality in our lives change. Certainly, I think COVID is one of them. Absolutely, this is this is an, an, an epoch in history. This is you know a, a monumental change. And again, I'm old enough to live through um, Kennedy's assassination as a young young boy. That that had changed America in some aspects. Um, I lived through 9/11. That changed. It was an event that changed time. Not changed time, but changed um, the way we view things. And I believe COVID is the same way, even though God's seasons, friends, may be the, exactly the same, but we're going to view them differently. You know, God, you know if, there's an expression that if it's new, it's not from God, and if it's God, it's not new. For God does things, you know, God is so consistent in his consistency. We change all the time, we view things all the time, but God is consistent. I mean, go to Numbers, like I said before, <clears throat> go to Numbers 13, and look at verse 12, I'm sorry, verse 17. It says, when Moses sent them out to spy the land of Canaan, he said to them, and this is, you know, they're just ready to take over the promised land. If you want to talk about a new season or an epoch in time, this is it for Israel. They're going into the promised land. It was promised to them 
hundreds of years ago before Abraham, I mean, well, with Abraham. And um, um, so we see this. So Moses was going to send them out to spy the land. Go up there into the Negev, then go up into the hill country and see what land is like. Uh, what the land is like, whether the people are weak, weak who live there, whether they are few or many, uh, and how is the land in which they live? Is it good or bad? How are the cities in which they live? Are they open camps or in fortifications? And how is the land? Is it fat or lean? Uh, are there trees or not? Make an effort then to go and get some fruit from the land. Now the time was uh, now was the time. I'm sorry. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness, from the wilderness of Zin to Rehob, at Libo Hamath. And when they had gone up to the Negev, they came to Hebron, where Aramin, uh, Shira, and Talman, uh, the descendants of Anak, were there. Now, Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. In other words, they went and they spied out the land, and Moses wanted to know everything about it. Friends, there's three things about the prophetic that I have uh, understood uh, in my own life, that there is a gathering of information, and with the information then comes a revelation from that information, and from that revelation then comes the transformation, how we act upon it. So there's a receiving of the information, a filtering it through what is God saying, through the information that is given, and then how do we act upon it? I call it the information, revelation, and transformation of receiving the prophetic word. And Father, and, and right now, the Father showed me, you know, God has shown me that, you know, we, we live in this, this post-COVID, well, we're going into a post-COVID uh, situation. They say maybe here for years or whatever, and it may be off and on and, and this and that, but that initial shock of last spring when everything was shut down and suddenly, oh, it's, it's a brand new thing for the church as it were. We're doing things by Zoom and we're closing churches and some are open, some are not, some are masked, some are singing, some are not. And we're having all these, 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 these challenges right now. What is church? But the spies were sent out, going back to, to um, Numbers, the spies were sent out, and they were, they were told, tell us exactly what it is. Are the, are the cities fortified? Is it, is it, is it, is it uh, chinks in the armor? Is it fat? Is it lean? You know, is, is it fruitful? Is it barren? Tell us what's going on. And God is sending on his prophetic people and examining the land. And, you know, I, uh, last week um, or just a few weeks ago, whenever this is going to be presented in, at Kingdom Faith, um, you know, Pastor Helen brought a word from uh, Jeremiah, and it's one of, uh, one of my favorite prophets. And, you know, every prophetic word does not have to be a bless me, bless me prophecy, friends. I mean, you look at the, Jeremiah was one of the most powerful prophets that the Lord had, and he called constantly for the church to come back, to the people of God to come back. And just the opposite, the other prophets are saying, no, everything's going to be okay. Peace, peace. And Jeremiah said, no, there is no peace. You know, the, 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 the spies came back. There's 12 that were sent. Ten of them had the negative report. Two, Joshua and Caleb, had a positive report. But, you know, they brought back an honest report. And what was going on? They said the cities were well fortified. They said the people are well, big, and strong. You know, they're, they're much too fortified for us. And the people are just too big and too strong. And they are the ancient enemies of Israel. We cannot take this land. And two, but they also came back, the 12 of them also uh, came back and said, there's much fruit. They all said that. They're much fortified, the big people. And they said, there's much fruit, good land, much potential. And 10 out of the 12 said, it's impossible to conquer. Friends, when I, I look at the landscape of what's going on right now, and I'll, I'll give you a, a prophetic report. I've spied out the land myself. And I've looked at the land that I'm on the streets every day, or every week, and uh, I talk to people, saved and unsaved, every day. I, um, you could say I'm, I'm in, not only in the high towers, but also in the trenches. And here's the report I see of the land in which we live. And this is straight out. You know, I see um, the spiritual decline, the social breakdown. I see the economic instability. I see the faithfulness of the politicians. I see the fake news, the powerlessness uh, that, that gripped this city, that, that, a fear to move. 
I see the increase of violence and divorce, the breakdown of family structures, the increase of suicide. Some is because of COVID and it's been increasing anyway, but even uh, in some cases, even tripled because of COVID. I see the continual drug taking and the addictions. And uh, I see the, 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 the sexual addictions and uh, with, with especially the young people in suicide, the, 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 so the, the uh, teenagers, the young, uh, younger people, and the abortions, the rapes, the sexual diseases, the rise of homosexuality and transgenderism, the LGBTQ plus communities, and the acceleration of rioting and burning and rebellion, the rising presence of Islam still and the influences of the New Age and the pseudo-religious practices. I'm just reading the, the daily headlines, friends. The rise of Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, and atheism especially, and the myriad of occultic and satanic practices and groups like that in our land right now, and especially in Western Europe. Amazing. The five of the top um, uh, uh, top uh, ten occultic nations, five of them are in Western Europe. The lethargic declining attitude towards God in our society and the purpose of the church within our population, the influence of the church, the lost interest of true, true pure spiritual matters and the indifference towards Christ. These are just things that came to my head. I'm just writing these things down from our society, friends. The disregard of biblical authority in our, in our, in our lives right now. And the worse than living through a post-COVID world, and this is what I've come up with, friends, worse than living through a post-COVID world, a post-COVID world, is living in a post-Christian world. And this is the world in which we live in today. I think Paul said it best, though. And let me just read what Paul says. And Paul said this in, in Romans chapter 1, verse 28. And again, it's like I'm reading the headlines right to you. It says, And just as they did not fit uh, uh, to acknowledge God any longer, God gave them over to a depraved mind to do those things which are not proper. This is Romans chapter 1, verse 28 and onwards. Being in field, see, I look into the land right now, this prophetic land we're living in right now, friends, and I see a people filled with all unrighteousness and wickedness, greed, evil, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice. I see people who are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, and boastful, inventors of evil, and disobedient to parents. I see a people without understanding, who are untrustworthy, unloving, and unmerciful. I see a people that although they knew the ordinance of God, they did not practice such things that are worthy of. Uh, they, they also um, uh, they also practice those 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 things, and are worthy that are worthy of death. And they not only did the same, but they also give hearty approval to those who practice them. Friends, that is just an honest assessment of the prophetic view of our society today. Very much like Jeremiah, when Jeremiah said, "My my people have committed two evils." This is Jeremiah chapter two. They have forsaken me, the living waters. And they have hewn for themselves cisterns that can hold no water. So not only have, uh, is our society forsaken Christ, they have hewn for themselves substitutions. S cisterns, broken cisterns. They've forsaken the living water, have hewn for themselves cisterns, that can even, and even those cisterns are broken and can hold no water. We are living right now through a place where Isaiah says in chapter 59, the truth has fallen in the marketplace. And no one has noticed, and worse, no one has a desire to pick it up. We live in a land right now, friends, where there's so many itchy ears, and people hear what they want to hear. People are disillusioned, but then again, they sit in the disillusionment. And yes, that is the report. They come back, and I look upon the cities. It's fortified cities that we're looking at. And the, 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 there's a great armament surrounding those cities. They are well fortified. And the people are big and strong in the influences. We're talking the media. We're talking the entertainment. We're talking the press. We're talking even massive religious movements, non-Christian religious movements coming in to take the city. Under Yes, listen, Christ was there before COVID. Christ is with us during COVID. Christ is with us after COVID. So we, we cannot just say, well, now it's a brand new thing because of COVID. Yes, there's, there's a paradigm shift happening as it was in 9-11, as it was in other things. But the fight is the same, friends. And this is what we're fighting. This is the information that, yes, the cities are big, they're fortified. Eh, but there's fruit and the fruit that can be taken. 
It's like David and Goliath, friends. It's the church many times. And yes, great is he that is in us than he that's in the world. That's absolutely true. As it was in David. But David still faced a man that was almost twice his size. And all he had was five smooth stones. And you may know the story of David and Goliath, friends. He had he picked up five smooth stones thinking he needed all five. When in fact he needed one. Purposely aimed. That, that stone and skull injection, friends, killed him. One stone, slay that giant. It's like Jesus standing in front of Pilate. Jesus was a, a very unarmed, maybe in the eyes of the world, maybe a pathetic looking prophet. Pilate looked at him and this, he said, This is your king. With his army, with his sword. And all the weight of, of the humanistic world and, and the governments upon uh, uh, Pilate's shoulders. He's the governor, of a Roman governor. Life and death is in his hands. And Jesus conquered him. So the shadow and the fear of, of, of these things crippled the other ten spies. You see, the shadow is always bigger. When, it, when you're dealing with fear, friends, the shadow is always bigger than the reality. It's like the mouse that stands in front of a light and you're looking on the wall and the mouse looks so huge because of the shadow because it's placed underneath and the shadow rises up and the mouse looks huge like a monster. And then when you kind of move the light a little bit or you come closer, you realize it's a tiny little mouse with a huge shadow. And that's what Satan gives us. The little mouse, the mouse that roared and yet the shadow seems so, so big. It's, it's a time right now the prophetic word right now friends is we have to take a look at our position and our condition and going back to that numbers passage you have to look at the the position and the condition of what the spy saw see if you see your position that's in christ through the eyes of your condition you'll always see yourself as a failure because your condition is fallen it's it's sinful and I look at my position, I say, yes, I'm raised with Christ, but I'm, I'm so filthy, I can't make it that way, I'm no good, I'm just a sinner, I'm just weak. But if you look at your condition to the guys of your position, yes, I'm all those things I've just mentioned, but I am risen with Christ. Yes, I am a child of God. Yes, I have the Holy Spirit within me. My position is I'm a king's kid. That's my position in life. Now, the world may see me differently and, you know, they may just, they may see something totally different. Those who do not have the eyes of the Spirit understand the working of the Holy Spirit in one's life. But my position is I'm raised with Christ. I'm a new creation. The old is past. Behold, all things have become new in my life and through Christ. I have become a reconciler of human souls to God and man. And I have been made an ambassador. That's my position and so I look at my condition through the eyes of my position. And that I can conquer all things. Caleb saw his position. He saw the condition through the eyes of his position. And God is raising up a Caleb coalition. Those people who understand, who are joined together, and say, yes, we will not be moved by what we see. But we'll walk by faith. And yes, and that's why he says also in, he, in the, the Numbers passage that, you know, we feel like grasshoppers in front of that. And friends, we do. And we are. We, 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 we are dust. Matter of fact, Jesus, the Lord even, even called Israel dust. In that sense, compared to an almighty God, eternal God, we're so temporal, we're so finite. Yes, if God would just, just whisper the word die, everything would, would die. That's how powerful he is. And, but we, we are... We're more than dust, friends, but our, our, our body is frail, but we're filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. See, the good news is the bad news is wrong. And again, going back to Isaiah, whose report will you, will, will you believe? Will you believe the, the ten spies that said, no, it's just too big, we cannot take it. Let's go back to Egypt. And again, reading through that Numbers passage, Numbers 13 and 14. They even said, let's go back to, past, go back to Egypt. This is now into to Numbers 14. It's better to die in Egypt than the same old, same old that Moses heard over and over again. Let's go back to Egypt. Moses doesn't know what he's talking about. He's, he's, he's going to kill us. And he's the one that brought them out. But see, that's the information, friends. See, the report is, and, and you hear this in churches today sometimes, the fearful expectation 
Where's God? If you know, I, I saw one sermon from a, a mainline denominational church. I was, I was, I was flabbergasted. And in the sermon, I read, I read the, 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 the priests or the minister's sermon. I read it, you know, I saw it, I read it. And they even said, well, since the, the, the United Nations is the only hope we have, let us pray for this particular peace in this particular area in the world. And I said, oh, my God, this is a man of God speaking to his people, saying the, the United Nations is the only hope they have. No, no, friends, it's not. The, Holy, the, the United Nations is compared to God's wisdom is a joke. Every human initiative, if, you, if that is the only hope you have, you will fail. All of it. And you break it down to individual lives. If you're de- relying on your own strength, friends, you will fail. It is by the power of spirit. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. See, that's the information that was given to them. And this is the prophetic word. We get the information. And now comes the revelation. See, now go back to that that uh, Romans, I'm sorry, the, uh, the Numbers uh, verse uh, chapter 14. Whenever things, situations like this happen, friends, when new seasons happen, so it were, God raises up certain people. And in Israel, they were blessed having a man like Moses with them. Moses always sought the Lord. He always fell on his face. When he heard these things, see, God raised up Moses, Aaron, Joshua, and Caleb. Those four men stood against the whole nation on based on the word, the fake news from the the the, the uh, ten um, of the spies, and it really wasn't fake news. What they were saying was absolutely true. They are, they are huge men. The cities are fortified. There's much fruit, but we can't take it. That's the fake news. That's the bad news. The good news was, yes, this, the, the cities are fortified. Yes, we have a, a formidable enemy. But God is greater. So with Moses, Aaron, Joshua, and Caleb, God raises up the prophet, the priest, the disciple, and the visionary. And those four men. We have the prophet, the priest, the disciple, and the visionary. And we have that in this church today, friends. We have a prophetic word. We have a priestly ministry. We have disciples and we have visionaries. See, Moses and Aaron began to intercede. Look at at chapter 14, verse 5. When they heard this, Numbers 14, 5. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces in the presence of all the assembly of the congregation and the sons of Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, there they are, Moses, Aaron, Joshua, and Caleb, of who, who had spied out the land, tore their clothes. And they spoke to all the congregation and the sons of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to spy out is exceedingly good land. If the Lord is pleased with us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. That's the good news, friends. That if the Lord is with us, and friends, he is with us, and greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. That's the good news. And that's the prophetic word that came forth. And that is the revelation now, friends. We have the information. And the information is that the good news is the bad news is wrong. I can look at society. I see it. You know, it's like that, that, that this, this parable, a friend of mine, a poet friend of mine wrote, and uh, it's, it's, it's a lengthy poem, but within it, he just says it's the old man and, the, and, and his grandson in a boat and they're fishing. And the son just is complaining about everything. He sees all the worms on the bottom of the lake. And finally, the grandfather is just so fed up. He says, yes, 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 my son. I see the worms on the bottom of the lake. But I also see how the sun glistens on top of the lake. I fear you see only the worms. And that's just right now when we have people who do not understand the ways of God, the ways, the moving of the Spirit. They see the worms. They see what is bad. They see how is God going to overcome this. But Caleb speaks. And this is the, the Caleb coalition, friends. This is the voice that comes forth of a uniformed vision, a unified, rather, a unified vision of what seeing the bad news, but seeing the good news, the good spirit, the powerful spirit behind this bad news that they can conquer it. Basically, it's been, and this is the, the message we've heard for years and years and years, even from going back to ancient Israel. One is have confidence in God. God is able to do it. What you're going through right now, God is able to conquer. Be of good courage. Lift your voice. Lift your eyes. 
since you're raised with Christ. That's your position. Speak those things from a place of position, even when you're looking down at your condition. Don't look at your position through the eyes of your condition. You'll always fail. Look at your condition through the eyes of your position, and you'll always win. Have confidence in God. Be of good courage and proclaim Christ. Be the ambassador of Christ. See, many, many words have been spoken this season, friends. This time of, of COVID, the, the whole COVID season. And I tell you, you know, as I said before, at, at the beginning, we're always going through seasons, friends. This is nothing new. So we hear the word all the time. It's a new season. It's a new season. Of course it's a new season. Because God is not stagnant. God keeps moving us on. The river, which seems the same all the time, you go closer, it is moving all the time. And there's life underneath the river, the water. And yet from a distance, it's always the same. God's like that. The season after season after season, it happens, friends. And yet let's be prepared for what God is doing now. And that's the revelation. See, the information came, and then we have the revelation. The revelation is that, yes, the, it's bad news, but the good news is the bad news is wrong, to have courage, have confidence, and continue to proclaim Christ. And then we have the transformation. So we have the information, we have the revelation, and now we have the transformation. And God is saying, step up, step out, and step in. Step up now. Shake yourself off. It's like the man who, wow, well, the man who was, who was lame. And um, in his hand, he's sitting in the, in, in the congregation. And Jesus says, stand up. Stretch forth. And be healed. And that man probably had, he was in the church, I don't know how long he was in that synagogue, for such a long, long time. And he just thought he was going to be crippled the rest of his life. Until he met Jesus. Step up, step out, and now step in. See, the fruit is ours to be taken, friends. And those giants that we see, all of them have been conquered on the cross. Every single one. The fear, the anger, the unforgiveness, the bitterness, the lack of confidence, the fearfulness. The idea that you still see yourself as a grasshopper. I mean that biblically as, as the, the spies say, we are like grasshoppers to them. We're like bugs. We're small. We, can't, we cannot take this. Let me just tell you before I go on, it says in Numbers 14, 24, and this is the Caleb Coalition. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit and has followed me fully, I will bring into the land which he entered and his descendants shall take possession of it. <laughs> if you know the story, friends, and I believe most of you do, 40 years later, Caleb, as an old man, walked into the land of Canaan. God is faithful. Why? Because he had a different spirit. He believed that the, the good news was that the bad news was wrong. He believed that and acted upon it. And that fruit is now ours. And look at the fruit that we have now, friends. Hmm. See, the fruit of the Spirit, friends, is we have that love. And we have that joy and that peace. We have that patience and the goodness, the kindness, and the faithfulness, the gentleness, that long-suffering, and the self-control. You know, in verse, you know, chapter 13, just go back to that, Numbers 13, verse 23 and 24, again, in Numbers. It says, you know, and they, and they came to, the, to the, this valley, and, um, and there they cut down a branch with a single, a single cluster of grapes, a single cluster, and they carried it on the pole. It was so huge that they had to carry a single cluster on a pole between two men with some of them with the pomegranates and, and figs. And the place was called Eshtol. And that means cluster. <laughs> and that's the church, friends. See, the Caleb co uh, coalition dwells in this land. It's a land of cluster, of grapes, of, of fruit. Not just one or two hand-picked things, friends. We live with the, the cluster. Huge, huge grapes. And there's this 
five groups, there's five things I want to talk about right now, very, very quickly, because my time has gone on. But the transformation. We have the information, which led to a revelation now, and the transformation in our lives. And just five scripture verses, here, very, very quickly as I go on, just go to go write these down. Ephesians 4, chapter, chapter 4, verse 22. The first grape we have, friends, is that, hum- that humility. And the humility, if we humble ourselves, God will raise us up. And then with that humility, we're able to speak the truth. Speak the word, friends, and he'll be there. It's, a, it's, a, it's from a, poet, a poem from another poet friend of mine. And uh, again, it's, it's, it's a lengthy poem, but this, a, the reoccurring phrase came and stuck with me. I, I did a show with her before. It was, it was a poetry show. And um, we, we, we performed this particular poem. And there's a reoccurring theme through this show. Speak the word, and he'll be there. In Ephesians 4, 22, and 25, um, it says this. It says that in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted but in the accordance with the lusts of deceit, and that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new self, which in the likeness of God has been created in, in all righteousness and holiness in the truth. Therefore, laying aside falsehood, speak truth to each other, each one of you, with his neighbor, for we are all members of one another. First fruit is humility. Second is courage, that we're stepping out from the crowd and going back to uh, the one that actually um, <clears throat> went to the new land uh, when saw the, one of the spies, and Joshua said in Joshua 1, verse 5 through 9, and this is to everybody here, with the courage, that no, no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. This is verse 5, chapter 1 in Joshua. Just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you and will not fail you. Uh, or forsake you. And verse 9, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. First fruit is humility. Second fruit is courage. A stepping out into the, out from the crowd. The third fruit, friends, is discernment. A realizing of what God is saying. And we see that in Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, um, which says, <clears throat> let me get that well-known passage, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, which says, I urge you, brethren, I urge you, church, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service. It is your act of worship. It's your act of worship. You say we, you know, we worship and stuff. That's your act of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the will of God, what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And that is the, that, the discernment, realizing what God is saying. The fourth fruit is obedience, acting upon that knowledge. And for that, friends, let me just go to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3 verses 21 through 24. Uh, 21, uh, chapter 3, verse 21 through 24. It says, Beloved, in your, um, if your heart does not condemn us, uh, then we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from Him because we, keep his, because we keep His commandments and do the things that are pleasing in His sight. And this is His commandment, that we Believe in the name of of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. And the one who keeps his commandments abides in him and he in him. And we know that this is what, that he abides in us by the spirit he has given us. Obedience to Christ, acting upon that knowledge that you know. And the last thing, friends, is that trust. And again, the same author, Different book, John chapter 14. Let me just read that to you. John chapter 14, uh, verses 1 through 4, which just says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. This is Jesus talking of his last words to his disciples on earth. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come to you again and receive you to myself, that where I am you may be also. And you may know the way where you are going. And that is following Christ, friends, to the very end. And we know where we're going, friends. Death has no sting. No matter where he has called you. 
In this church, friends, there are future pastors. I, I'm absolutely amazed and, and, and rejoice of what he's doing among the young people in this church. Right, the raising up of leadership, and, and that's the heart I know of, of, of pastors Jonathan and Helena to raise up, to follow, to have a, a, a Caleb coalition, uh, coalition, uh, co- um, coalition, one based on humility and courage, discernment, obedience, and trust in God. And so with this, friends, you can deal with every, every season. And we are going through a new season. Of course we are. We're always going through seasons. That, that's, that, that doesn't shake me either way. <laughs> and I'm prepared for the seasons to come. I mean, with or without COVID, friends, we're going through a season. We always do. But with this in mind, friends, now we have the information. We have the revelation. And now we're going through that transformation to being God's hands extended. His voice raised up to a very dying world, a fearful world, a desperate world. And this is the Caleb Coalition. Are you with us? Are you joining us? Hallelujah. Friends, let's pray. And I'll leave that to, um, turn it over to pastors now. Uh, Be blessed. And I'm there with you in spirit. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again very, very shortly. God bless you. Bye-bye.